Howdy folks and welcome back to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making fresh corn fritters just the way my granny used to make them. Now this was a requested video and a lot of people have said I've tried corn fritter recipes for years and I just can't get that flavor that I remember from when I was a kid. That's because to get the flavor you remember from when you were a kid, you gotta shuck some corn. Now you can make these corn fritters using frozen corn or canned corn. If you're gonna substitute frozen corn, just thaw it and rinse it off. If you're gonna use canned corn, make sure you drain it. But the way to get that taste that you remember from when you were a kid is fresh corn. You need about two cups, which is about three ears of corn, and you just slice it off the cob. You don't want to go too deep because you don't want to get uh, any of the corn cob in your corn. And don't worry if you leave a little bit because I'm going to show you how to get that too. You just need a sharp knife. You can get a gadget that will do this for you, but I don't have the gadget. so and a paired knife works pretty well. You just keep turning it and going from the top to the bottom and slice it all off. It does make a little bit of a mess. You can see it kind of going everywhere here. Now you can see all these ridges that are left when we're done. You want to turn your knife sideways and kind of scrape the corn cob to get all that stuff out of there because that's the sweetest part of the corn. Um, it's a little bit juicy and it is going to affect the amount of milk that we add to our mix here, our batter. But you want that for the flavor. That's a big part of the reason why you don't get the same flavor if you use frozen or canned corn because you can't scrape the cob. So. Take a second and dump this in here so that we know we have enough corn. Okay, that's about two cups and that's about what you need. And if you're going to use, like I said, frozen or canned, you want about two cups of corn. Um, this is a pretty simple recipe and if you've ever done pancakes, the ingredients are very similar. Okay, once you get your two cups of corn, whatever kind you're using, you need a cup of all-purpose flour, about a teaspoon of salt, and we'll go ahead and dump that in there, two teaspoons of baking powder, you can dump that in there, I'm sorry, that was a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, so you have one teaspoon of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. Dump that in your flour. And we're just going to give that a little stir. I have a tablespoon and a half about of melted butter. You can adjust this a little bit depending on how you want your corn fritters to taste. Now the butter is going to add flavor, but it's also your oil. and the more you add, the more moist they're going to be, but they are also going to get chewy as you add more. If you did like three tablespoons of butter, it would make your corn fritters very chewy. So if you remember a more chewy fritter, add more butter. But the basic recipe, probably about a tablespoon and a half of butter, will give you a really nice texture on your fritters. They won't be dry and they won't be too chewy. And we'll just dump that in there. You do want to melt it. And you want to beat your egg up a little bit before you put it in there. Okay. 
Now we're going to stir in our corn next because the amount of milk we add is going to depend on how thick you want it. Some of us like a really thick fritter where other people like a really thin fritter. And that's very easy to obtain the thickness that you want. You just adjust how moist your batter is. Okay, we're gonna start by adding almost a half a cup of milk. Now I have three quarters here, but like I said, we're not gonna add that all at once. And we're gonna adjust the batter as we fry these to show you how to get thicker fritters and thinner fritters. Okay, you can see here this is very thick, but it is spoonable. And you can fry the corn fritters this thick and it's gonna give you a really thick corn fritter. It's not gonna spread out a lot and it is gonna rise up because of that bacon powder. Now you're gonna need something else if you want to get the taste. You're gonna to have to dig out your iron skillet. An iron mm. skillet does change the flavor of food. You want to turn it on about medium and you want to let it preheat really good. And you actually probably want to turn it on about the time you start mixing up your fritters because it takes a while for it to preheat. Okay, we're going to take the rest of our milk over here because we are going to add some more milk after we start frying these and after I show you how thick these will come out because I'm going to show you how to thin them down. Now, in my skillet that I have over here preheating, I just have enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan good. You don't really want to deep fry these. Um, some people do deep fry them, but it's not really a fritter if it's deep fried. It's like a version of a hush puppy almost. The corn fritters that, like I said, my granny always made, she fried in a skillet. And you can use a non-stick skillet for this, but it's not going to give you quite the same flavor because the iron skillet does change the taste of food. Okay, now it's really starting to get hot. You can see bubbles popping up all around my little sample that I put in there. And that's what we want. Now the pan is hot enough that we can add some batter to it and fry up some fritters. And you can see how thick this is. It really does not flow at all. And it's going to make some super thick fritters. You're actually going to want to flatten out just a little bit like that so that they get done in the middle. While these are frying up, I want to take just a minute and thank all of you for your very kind comments and all of your support. And I want to apologize because I have not been able to answer your comments on a daily basis for quite some time. Um, I'm having some problems with my eyes. Uh, I'm not like going blind or anything, so don't worry about that. But I have trouble looking at my computer. I've had some a lot of eye pain and eye irritation and my computer really really makes that worse so until i can fix that problem i'm trying some different tints on some glasses and hopefully i'll be able to adjust to it and be able to use the computer again once i find the right prescription eyeglasses with the right tint but until that time all i can do is catch a few comments on my phone as I, notifications pop up and i don't get very many of them that way so I'm sorry I have not been able to answer your comments. I am working on finding a solution to that problem. And I also want to apologize because it has been so long since we have made a video. I want to kind of tell you some of the stuff that's been going on over the past year that has kept us occupied. Um, Brett and I have several big projects going on around the house. We're building a barn, just the two of us by ourselves. We've built a camper and we're working on a boat. We've built a houseboat and working on an old truck. We're rebuilding it. And we just have all kinds of projects like that are, that are filling up our lives. And something occurred to me, well, actually a few things occurred to me. Whenever you do any sort of a ministry at all, anything where 
you are sharing any part of God's Word or you're trying to encourage people to come to know Jesus, Satan does everything in his power to interfere with that and stop that. And he has certainly thrown down a few stones in our path, but I'm not going to give a lot of credit to him for anything. I mean, he's disrupted life a few times with things for sure over the past year since we started really using this channel for a ministry. But the other thing that occurred to me is that you really should be careful what you pray for. And I'm going to explain what I mean about, by that. Now these have only been in here for just a little while, but you can see they're starting to get brown now. Not quite brown all the way across, so that's not quite ready to flip yet. You kind of do get bubbles with these like you get with pancakes, but when they're this thick, you're not going to get as many. And you may actually have to flip your fritters a couple of times to get them really done. You want them about as brown as our little test piece there. Now what I was saying about being careful about what you pray for. Many years ago, 25 years ago about, when I first became a Christian, the children and I were uh, attending a small church here in town. And it was the practice of the older people in the church on Wednesday night to kind of all chip in together. And they would give the children a dollar to stand up in front of church and recite Bible verses that they had learned. Well, I was in the habit of making my children earn money that they got because I just think that's a good thing to teach children. And there certainly couldn't be much better things to reward a child for than memorizing the Bible. So I thought that was pretty good, but I used those dollars to really motivate my children to learn the Bible. Now, of course, they learned John 3.16 pretty early on. And if you're a parent of young children and you're teaching them Bible verses, you have to teach them Ephesians 6.1. Um, but after we had been there for just a little while, I realized that a lot of the kids, even the older kids, were every week reciting Jesus wept. And then they would take the dollar. Well, that's not really very fair. So I decided that my children were going to learn the 23rd Psalm. So we learned it in a week. And Samantha at the time, who was the oldest, was only about six years old. And she had it completely memorized. And so did Jackie by the end of the week. And Alexandria could say it with them, but she was only about three. So saying it by herself would have been kind of hard at three. Well, oh, two or three weeks ago, I was reading my Bible and studying, and I realized something. The 23rd Psalm is actually a prayer. So for about 25 years, I have been praying to God to fill my cup. I mean, if you know the 23rd Psalm, you know that part of it is, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then it goes on to say, Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies, my cup runneth over. Well, when you pray for 25 years for your cup to run over, guess what? <laughs> Eventually, your cup is going to run over. And for some time, I realized I have had that problem of having way more that I could possibly hold on to. And then I realized that part of, or well not part of my problems, a great many of my problems are that I'm always trying to catch what's falling on the floor. Well, when God blesses you to the point that your cup runs over, you have to let go of what runs on the floor because that's not what the good stuff is. What the good stuff is, is what's still in the cup, what you can hang on to. And you can't spend all your time worrying about what's spilled. Let it go and enjoy what you still got in your cup. And I think that's a part of why I personally am having such a hard time getting everything done. And I think that's a the problem that a lot of us have. We try to get everything done. We try to take care of everything. We try to keep everything together, not let anything fall through the cracks. When God gives you that abundant life where your cup is running over, and He will if you believe in Him and you pray for it, I mean, I'm not the only person in the world who has an abundant life, I know, because I see how 
frantically people are running around today. When he does, we have to realize that what runs on the floor is not what he wants us to hang on to. Just let all the little things go and don't worry about them. So, that being said, I'm going to try really hard to let that little stuff that run on the floor just soak in so that I have enough time to get back to these videos, get back to this YouTube channel and back to the time that I spend with all of y'all because I really enjoy this time and I do still get to hear every single one of your comments because even though I can't look at my computer, Brett will read them to me every single night when we come home from work. And that's another thing that's going on. And that's a pretty exciting thing for this whole area around where we live. All of our local viewers, um, we have spent the last three years helping Samantha and David build a store. Um, anyway, the store is called Yesteryear Country Market and it's located on Highway 63 in Speedwell. So come by and check that out if you're local. But we're working four days a week now, sometimes five days a week, very long hours, and that takes a lot of time away. But I should still have time to do this if, like I said, I let some of the extra stuff just soak in the floor and don't worry about it. So I'm very glad to be back with you guys, and I hope this is the start of regular video uploads again. Okay, we want to get some paper towels here and get ready to drain some of these because while I was talking, they are getting done. All right, now that's a really thick one for you there, and I'm gonna turn my stove eye down a little bit, and you can see these are nice and brown. And I'm gonna add, well, our little test piece got a little too brown. You want to kind of clean all these crumbs out of your pan because they will burn as you add more. Now I'm going to add just a little bit more oil and I'm going to show you how to make these thinner. And you can adjust, like I said, your batter and make them as thick or thin as you want. I'm going to add most of this milk that I have left and just stir this up. Okay, now you can see that flows a little bit more. I'm not going to be able to get that out of there probably with this fork. So I'm going to use my little scooper here. Don't need to mash those down. They're kind of falling out. And about three is enough. Now you do need to keep an eye on the heat because they will burn. The pan is very warm now. And because these are a little thinner and the pan is much hotter, they're going to cook a little faster. First bat, or the first round that you put in your pan always takes longer to cook than the next round. Those are still a little bit thick. I think I'm going to add a little bit more milk and kind of get a little bit more milk, maybe just another tablespoon or two, and make some even a little bit thinner. Okay, and you can see there how much thinner we have it than we had it before and you'll see the different thickness in the fritters when we fry them. You might find that you have to add just a little bit of oil every time you add a new batch of these in your pan. Um, with a non-stick pan you're not going to use as much oil as you do with your cast iron pan. And I am using a grapeseed oil every time I'm just pouring in you know maybe a tablespoon to coat the bottom of the pan. You can fry them in anything from butter to lard, any kind of oil you like. I like the grapeseed oil because it's a little lighter and it doesn't interfere with the taste of the corn fritter. One of the reasons for using fresh corn instead of canned or frozen is that fresh corn is so much sweeter than what you get out of a can. And the fresher the better. Okay. That's about the color you're looking for right there. I'm just gonna finish frying these here while I say goodbye again. I really do appreciate y'all joining us on the Hillbilly Kitchen and I appreciate all your support. 
And like I said, I hope this is the beginning of some very regular uploads again. And I am sorry it has been so long. But whether you enjoy these for breakfast, which I can definitely see me eating some of these in the morning because it's just me and Brett here and we're not going to eat them all the night. Or you want them for a snack, a side dish with dinner, maybe something special to take to a cookout. Something that, you know, people haven't had in a while. I hope you give these corn fritters a try. Don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave us. And until next time, remember to put God first.